Hello students and fellow homeopaths. I'm Dr. Philip Bailey and I've been practicing classical homeopathy for some 30 years now. I've authored several books on psychological materia medica, like Homeopathic Psychology, Lacquer Remedies in Practice, and Carson Asylum and Materia Medica. I'm passionate about teaching homeopathy, and so I keep conducting workshops and programs on classical homeopathic prescribing. And through this course on comparative homeopathic psychology, I look forward to sharing my experience with you on the psychological profiles of constitutional remedies. In these 10 modules on comparative homeopathic psychology, we will look at the breadth and depth of psychological features of over 50 constitutional remedies, filling in the skeleton of sketchy mental pictures that were derived from basic training with flesh and sinew based on actual clinical experience. The mental profiles that I'll be sharing in this module go beyond the list of psychological symptoms that we find in traditional material medicas, since these profiles have been compiled from an understanding of the whole person, where each aspect of the personality relates to every other aspect. Dr. Aditya Sharma is with me now, and he'll be presenting some of these modules. Hello, Welcome. sir. Hello. It is indeed a pleasure to present your work on this platform. This course begins with a thorough understanding of the lack remedies. We begin with an in-depth analysis of the mental features and psychological traits common to all lack remedies. We then go on to examine in detail the specific mental features of six poorly understood and infrequently used lack remedies, including lack humanum, lack equinum, and lack caninum. We will also examine and compare the psychological features of carcinocinum, sepia, and lack felinum. These three constitutions resemble each other closely. Sir, I have seen in my practice that natrums and norums often are quite close as the perfect remedy for the case. So how would you differentiate or understand the similarities between these two? It's true there are a lot of similarities. Um, for instance, they are both quite formal people and also there's a tendency in both types to suppress the emotions. As far as differences are concerned, orum is much heavier emotionally than natrum and has much more rigidity of thinking. All right. I'm sure we'll get to know a lot of more questions answered in our course. In this course, we'll also be talking about Baraita and Calcarea sorts. Again, what are the main differences and similarities between these two very prominent and commonly used group of families? It's true there are a lot of similarities between these two groups and a lot of differences. As far as similarities are concerned, Calcarea and Baraita are both very down to earth and quite uncomplicated groups of people. From the point of view of differences, calcarias tend to be extroverted and baritas tend to be introverted. In addition, baritas have this sense of inferiority and a fear of being made fun of and looking foolish. Now, I am presenting another module in this course on the group of remedies we use for treating insanity or unstable people. This includes stramonium, platina, veratrum, hyoscyamus and calibramatum. So what do you find the most distinctive in the ferrum group of remedies when coming on to psychological traits? In the ferrum group of remedies, the focus is on control, using control in order to get done what needs to be done. Hmm. Alright. And are we also able to compare this with say maybe cuprum and the Kali group? It's very interesting the combination of cuprum and ferrum because there's a very similar issues of keeping everything in control. It's just much more extreme in Kuprum that everything has to be totally controlled. So when we look at Kali's, there's also a need for control, but the emphasis is more on everything having to be logical and understood. Right. I'm sure this and much more information in the module. Another remedy which comes to my mind regarding psychological traits is Staphysagria. We prescribe it so often, it's such a commonly used medicine, but we also tend to confuse it with the mental features of magnesia salts. So how would you describe the differences between them? It's true, the similarity is very strong that they both have a fear of anger and a suppression of anger. 
The difference is that Stavros Egeri is a very kind of uh, emotional, romantic, intuitive type, and the magnesiums are not particularly like this. Right. I'm sure after watching the module and learning from Dr. Bailey, you'll be able to understand the finest details of these medicines and a lot many more. Lastly, we will also examine the mental features of Lycopodium, Silesia and Argentum remedies, all used in cases of anticipatory anxiety. But how would one differentiate between them? That's a good question. I would say that for Lycopodium, the essential feature is a sense of powerlessness that we don't see so much in the other two. With Argentums, there's a real sense of um, impulsivity that we don't tend to see in Lycopodium. So with Silesia, what I find is that it is the integrity and the sensitivity of the client that stands out. Right. So friends, by learning through these video lectures, you will greatly increase your understanding of the mental features of the constitutional remedies and thereby ensure that your prescribing is more effective as well as accurate. So what are you waiting for? Sign up at www.thehomeopathicacademy.com and enroll in the course. Keep, Keep learning. learning.